do you like Jesus? Miracles There is no one else like you. Let the music play. song about how great he is come on just sing it you're great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one that's not real can we do it again summons you in song declaring how great you are and how great you've been and surely and truly we searched all over and our souls couldn't rest contented until we found you thank you that we know that Jesus is the answer thank you that you are the way the truth and the life you are the very air that we breathe. In you we live and we move and we have our being. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we love you. We don't want this to just be another Friday night Bible study. We want you to have your way tonight. Let us slay us so that your word can find us out. Oh God, let your word come forth and teach us to order our steps. Now, Father, have your way in this service. We love you and we praise you. Those listening over live stream, bless them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you inhabit the praises of your people. Oh, Lord, we thank you and we love you. We pray for Sister Thomas and all those that are in need of prayer. For you are a prayer answering God and you are great and you do miracles so great. For you surely are still in the miracle working business. Lord, we love you and we thank you. These blessings, we believe them, we count them done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
my Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Again, all of us should be aware, cognizant of what is happening in the world today, worldwide. This is worldwide. This pertains to everyone. Uh, Hamas freed, I think, 25 or 50 hostages. 50. Listen to me. It won't work. It's impossible. It cannot work. Uh, I, I, I told you the world is using the Muslims as a control violence. They control them. They control them. So what do you mean by they control them? If you remember the picture, can you find a picture of the Pope kissing the Quran? Let me know if you find it. All the evidence is, is, is visible. Every person in the world can see it, but if you don't know how to make a composite, uh, what, what I mean, in other words, you take information. Now look, look, that's affection. This is the Pope initiating this, kissing the Quran. Why? When the Quran talks about Christians, but particularly the Jews, this is a religious conflict that is being exploited. So when all the other Catholics see this here, they're going to think it's all right. Hamas is right now setting up camp in South America. I'm trying to think what country it is. It, it's, it's, it's either Argentina or Venezuela. Uh, the Hamas terrorists are there. They are being supported. All right, uh, let's look at what is happening. Uh, sixth chapter of Ephesians, what is happening spiritually. You have to understand what is happening today in the world is spiritual. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. It was just like the Crusaders. They called themselves Christian Crusaders fighting against um, the Ottoman, Ottoman, the Muslim Empire. Uh, they're, they're fighting each other. Well, those Christian crusaders were not real Christians. They were Catholics. Real Christians cannot do anyone any harm physically because Jesus says, be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. When they came to arrest or apprehend Jesus, Peter had a sword. So Peter used the sword to defend himself and Jesus, and he cut off the priest's servant's ear. Jesus said, oh, no, 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 put up your sword. Say, for if you live by the sword, you shall die by it. And Jesus picked the ear up and healed him instantly. Uh, we're, we're not supposed to bear arms. We're, we're not God's ministers of wrath. Be as wise as a serpent, as harmless as a dove. So when we look at what is happening in the world, I'm going to show you it's a spiritual. I'm going to show you spiritual. I'm going to give you the evidence. We're going to listen. To, I'm going to use the word like composite, composite. In other words, you're going to take all the information, crystallize it, put it together, all the information, put it together, then you understand what is happening. But if you isolate this problem against that problem, let me give you a classic illustration. In the 24th, don't turn, 24th chapter of Matthew, it says nation against nation and what? Okay, kingdom against kingdom is what is happening in the world. It's called infighting. Same people fighting each other. Uh, let, let's take um, the Protestants and the Catholics. In, that's Ireland. I think that's Ireland. Yeah, now think about the Ireland, the Irish. The Northern Irish 
I think was Catholic, and the Southern Irish were Christians, supposedly Christian Christians. Uh, let's say ignorance more than anything else. And they're fighting and killing each other. This is the Civil War. Uh, can you find anything about um, Ireland, the Protestants against the Catholics, or the Catholics against the Protestants? What happened is uh, England, England gave the country of Ireland the opportunity to be sovereign, to be a, a separate nation, and I think the Catholics wanted to stay attached to England, and the Protestants said, no, so they're fighting, killing each other. Every time you hear of infighting, they always show the African nations fighting each other. That's bogus. Koreans are fighting against each other. Vietnamese, how the troubles began in Northern Ireland. After mounting tensions between Catholic nationalists and Protestant loyalists, particularly in Belfast and Derry, violence broke out in the late 1960s, last few years, killing each other for the name of religion. Uh, not politics, but religion first. These are the same people. We had a kid a couple years ago from Ireland and I mistakenly called him English. He was insulted. I'm trying to think of that boy's name, the basketball player. He was in, he, who? Kevin. Kevin did not want to be called English. He was Irish. And he, and he was a black Irishman, believe it or not. Nothing to do with well, well, that's infighting. That's happening everywhere. All right. Let's take the Muslim. Yan, 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 Yan men. They're killing each other like crazy. Y-E-M-A-N, I think it is, civil war. The Iraqis are having a civil war. Um, Qatar, I think it's called Qatar. Q-U-T-A-R, Qatar. They're fighting, they're all Muslims fighting against each other, killing, slaughtering each other. What is it about? It's about religion. Let me show you this here. I showed, you, I showed you about the Catholic Church. Listen, no one has killed more Christians than popery or the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church. I'm not talking about the saints. I'm talking about the Jesuits. The Jesuits means army of Jesus Christ. That's what it means. They were the crusaders. Pope John apologize for the Catholic Church killing over 50 million Christians. He apologized. Said we, it, it, they took their land, took their property, killed them, tortured them for over, uh, is it 50 million that he apologized for? Pope John apologizes to the world. Well, I mean, what's an apology now? What about reparations? Um, in other words, make up for the 50 million you, 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 you've killed. And then we go back to Columbus. Columbus, Christopher Columbus was a mass murderer. He killed, he slaughtered, he killed, he slaughtered, he killed, and he was made a, and, a, and, and believe me, a hero. So all this is happening everywhere. Pope said, look, look here. Pope says, sorry for sins of who? What church? No, no real Christian church. If you look at, uh, look at uh, sleeping, sweeping apology for attacks on Jews, women, and mar minorities, which Theologians warning. Say they didn't care. If you were not converted to Catholicism, they will torture you, torture you. But let's see how long this lasts. Look at where it says, first paragraph, second sentence. John Paul II yesterday attempted to purify the soul of the Roman Catholic Church 
by making a sweeping apology. How long did they get along with it? How long did it last? 2,000 years of what? Violence and what? And mistakes. Nobody talks about it. In fact, the, the Muslims show, show the same emblems and symbols as the Muslims and the Catholic Church. And in fact, as, we, as it stands today, the Muslims went to vote, uh, visit. They don't call him the Pope. You know what they call him? The Holy See. They just visit the Holy See. So now we're in a situation where everybody thinks it's just politics. No, it's above politics. It's about religion. Here, yeah. look at the third, uh, second paragraph. For the altar of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, he led Catholicism into uncharted territory by seeking. The Pope is asking for forgiveness for sins committed against Jews, heretics, women, everywhere. Listen, I was in Russia. <laughs> the gypsies get it all the time. We're on the bus in Moscow, and we were tourists with a big group, and the gypsies, they, we, I was getting on the bus, I was going to get on the bus, and the kids, listen, you're talking about poverty, the way they look, uh, the gypsies. They don't stay in one place, they travel all over Europe. And uh, the little girl or boy, I can't remember, was asking for some money. And I was, I'm good for that. I'm good for giving people asking. I'm going to my pocket. And this big Russian, he threw up his hand. I was stunned. And the kids, they ran away. They were begging. He didn't want me to show any kindness to them because gypsies, I hate it. They look... Show me a picture of a gypsy, because most people don't know what I'm talking about, a gypsy. They usually travel here. They educate. Their kids don't go to a regular school. They're like small communities that move from place to place. Now, these are gypsies. This is some of them here. Um, very antiquated. Yeah. Yeah, in other words, the community, be like the church moving here, moving there, etc. They are rejects. So the Pope apologized for brutal. Hitler, the Germans, the Germans wore out gypsies, Protestants, blacks, but mostly the Jews. The Germans, World War II. Uh, if you can, you sh I'm asking a lot. Can you show me a picture of the Germans and the and the Catholic priests, uh, Archbishop? I think it is together. Now remember, the Germans were known for what they call the Holocaust, where they killed, and this is disputable, six million Jews. They killed no Catholics. No Catholics. They didn't kill Catholics. Okay, you see here? Pope Paul, you see Adolf Hitler? Shaking hands with the, with the Protestants. I mean, with the, with the Germans, with the killers. Why would he endorse what you're saying? You're condoning what the Germans are doing to all these other races of people. The pictures speak for themselves. So you hear about the Holocaust, six million Jews. There is no science, there's no physical evidence that six, listen, people want to think you're crazy. Six million Jews were, were uh, killed by the Germans. No, no science, no evidence to it. Yet the Turkish, Muslim Turkish killed at least a million Armenians, killed at least a Holocaust. Do you hear anything about it? No, you won't hear anything about it. 
at least a million Armenians, and they tortured them. When I say they slaughtered the children, et cetera, uh, the women, uh, they just brutalized the Armenians, and yet you hear nothing about it. So, so every genocide museum, oh yeah, Armenians genocide, oh, they just killed, kill, 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 kill. You hear nothing about it. We live in a society in the world where the news is controlled. It's controlled, it's manipulated, it's fabricated, it's slanted, it's twisted, it's screwed, it's everything else. So you got to find the truth somewhere. It starts with, you must start, I'm going back to it, thinking. Some things just don't make sense. You have to be inquisitive. You have to be curious. You want, you've got to ask the question, why? Here, now you see all these Armenians here. Then, let's take the, the slave trade from Africa. Guess who started that? Muslims. Where did they take the first slaves from Africa to? To the Vatican. Gave it to the Pope as a gift. See if you can find that. There were 10, there were 10 slaves, 10, 10 African slaves. And I think it was, no, no, no. No, wasn't, his name was Henry, Henry the Navigator. Um, is that the right name? Yeah, Henry the Navigator. In the ancient world, he's famous. Most people don't know about Henry the Navigator. Well, he went to Africa. He befriended, uh, I don't know what tribe it was. And he took, so picked up some slaves, brought them back to Europe, gave them to the Pope as a gift. Gave them to the slaves as a Pope, Pope as a gift. I think it was 10. Then when they realized you could make money about it, they got more slaves and more slaves. And then Columbus did not discover the new world, what they call America and South America, the new world. Henry, yeah, Prince Henry the Navigator. There he is. Uh, the Lord, by discovery of the Ethiopians, let me see if you can see any more, uh, would be found as what maintained king and people of Portugal's uh, can I get in? Well, anyway, he started it. They saw they could make money. But the Muslims didn't just do the Africans, they did the Europeans. You don't hear about Muslims having white European slaves. You won't find it in the history book, but yet it's, it's everywhere. Henry the Navigator helped set the stage for the modern world Besides finding new trade routes and connecting various people, Henry expeditions began with the process of European colonization and as a transatlantic slave trade. There you go. That's the man. You won't find it in the history books. You won't find it in college. Unless you know somebody that knows someone, et cetera, et cetera. You'll never know that this information exists. Then... You have the, I'm trying to think of Yemen fighting each other. Everybody's fighting. But all they want to do is show you Africa, show you Africa fighting. Well, listen. Richest resource continent in the world is the African continent. Poorest people in the world, African continent. Why? It's controlled. They don't want to be rich. They don't want to profit off of their resources. No, it's a spiritual issue. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's more to it than that, why they can't succeed. Well, I want to show you here from the Bible what is happening in uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go with verse 12. For we struggle... For we struggle... We wrestle not against... This, this, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of darkness 
of this world. Wait a minute. What is insinuating is invisible. So you really don't see what's happening. What is happening that controls the world is invisible. Will you put up uh, mm, the mayor of New York talk about the invisible government? We see presidents, we see prime ministers. No, they don't rule anything. The uh, pope, what's the name? He doesn't run anything. It's the invisible control of the world, those behind the scene. Uh, let's take, for instance, uh, Idi Amin. He killed over a million Ugandans. The world knew about it. They didn't try to stop it. Okay, Sir Francis. Okay, this is the mayor. Where is it at? He said the real... Now, this is the mayor of New York City. Uh, he said, the real troublemakers menace of our republic, not democracy. They keep saying Israel is a democracy. Israel is not a democracy. America is not a democracy. The menace of our republic is the, the who? What type of government? Not the visible government that you can see, but the invisible government, which like a giant octopus, sprawls its slimy legs over our cities, states, and nation. Hmm. And it goes on to tell you, and it's biblical. Last sentence. Luke Cortez, a powerful international, what type? Money. Bankers, money. International bankers virtually, virtually, or truly, or absolutely run the United States government for its own selfish purposes. He's telling you, but nobody wants to believe it because uh, we are taught and educated to believe everything that we hear. So where's the invisible government? 1963, I think it was November 22nd, 1963, when... John F. Kennedy was assassinated. He tried to warn the American people about the invisible government. So they killed him. They assassinated him. Every country that had royalty, that had a king and a queen, uh, they had to be assassinated. They were assassinated. Give an example. Let's take Russia. They were determined to get back at a... Uh, I'm sorry. The Pope... The Pope... Uh, and what's his name? I can see the French, the French general. Napoleon. Uh, they were helping split America with the South. They were going to finance the South against the North. And when Russia found out, they sent a, a, a notice to the Popery and to Napoleon, say, if you continue to help the South, then we're going to help the North. That time, Russia was strong. So they had promised that one day they were going to destroy the royal, they call them the Tsar, in fact, I was talking to the kids, the Russian kids that were here a few years ago. I said, what about the czar? They didn't know what I was talking about. They didn't know that there was a czar, a czar, a czar of Russia. Didn't know it. And so when they got into power, they destroyed the Russian royal family, killed them all, just slaughtered them, the children, etc. Then came communism. So here I want to show you what the Bible says is reality, irrefutable, irrefutable. You can't even argue against it. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers, darkness, invisible of the world. Now here's the problem, against spiritual wickedness, 
in high places. Say, say the real problem is the force or the influence. Uh, let me tell you about the peace process. It's bogus. You don't have to be a genius to figure this out. It's a religious war. You're asking Hamas to forget about their religion. They're not going to do it. It is a general consensus that the Jews must be eradicated off of the face of the earth. Every Muslim state knows that. I don't care what type of peace agreement they have. It cannot be sustained because it's a spiritual issue. What is happening with America is a spiritual issue. What runs and dictates America is the spiritual issue behind all of the standards, or should I say positions, that we take. Everything is undergirded by a spirituality, but demonic. Remember, we're living in a time of seducing spirits, and what? That's the time we're living in. Evil men shall wax worse and worse. Doing what? What are they doing? Deceiving and being, and being what? And being deceived. Foolishness. It's in the history book. Show me a picture of uh, the city of Atlantis. I think it's Atlanta. You, everybody heard of the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, etc., and so forth. Well, that came from a philosophy. Do you know intelligent, educated, philosophical people believe this garbage? Look, at this is called Atlantis. A city is supposed to be on the Atlantic Ocean of a civilization that once ruled the world. You, you see those pictures right there? They're cartoons. They're computer generated. They're making it up. These are made-up pictures. There's no signs, nothing. The founder of Atlantis, Plato, the great philosopher, told the story of Atlantis about, uh, that's about 400 years, 360 years before Christ. The founders of Atlantis, he said, were half, see craziness? How do you make that up? We're half God and half human. But intelligent people believe that. They have no scientific archaeology or geographical evidence whatsoever, and yet they believe it. You know why? Because it's in a book. And again, was it Thomas Edison who said it's easier to fool, to see people than to convince them? And this is our problem. Convincing people they have been deceived. You know what that means? You were a fool. Nobody wants to admit that they were a fool. So they go along with it. Spiritual wickedness in high places. 24th chapter of Matthew. I could go to Luke, but I want to go to Matthew. So we have to get a handle on all the jargon, all the lies, all the slanted news. And if you want to know anything about the future, it's right here. Oh, incidentally, China, they have this another COVID. COVID supposedly came from China. There's strong evidence to support that it came out of uh, Annapolis, Maryland. Everybody know what, what's in Annapolis, Maryland? The Naval Academy, and uh, the Naval Hospital, very prestigious and secretly, it came from there. And so now the Chinese do have a problem all of the children in this particular area coming down with breathing problems, pneumonia, and lung problems. They say, oh, Chinese are doing it to us again. We got another disease coming. What well, is going to require eventually, you get vaccinated to protect again. 
Can you find anything about that? I'm asking you a lot. I should have just come to me. About China, the children have this rare disease. They don't know where it came from, how it's happening, but children, just children, just children, just children. Hmm. Somebody's got to be curious. My comoplasm, pneumonia, and RSV are known to affect children more than adults. You, you, you see that? Children. They're having school. One day ago, they're having school in the hospital. There's so many kids that are being affected. They can't breathe. And, but just kids. When did diseases start discriminating? Say, oh, you're an adult. I'm not going to mess with you. Uh, you too old. You too. Young. I just want some young kids. Now you know. Now you know I'm being facetious. I'm being funny. It's just like yeah. Okay yeah. I, can you see that? 19 hours ago. This should be worldwide, but it's very what I call selective news. If you don't know what to look for, when to look for it, you won't know anything like this. Let's see what truth truth has to say. Give you an example. Let me give you another example. Palestinians have only existed maybe a couple of years, couple, maybe 200 years, I think. Don't quote me on that. It's two or 400 years. There's no such thing as Palestinians. It was, in fact, the name. Is, was repulsive to the Muslims. It was repulsive. They thought it was too Christian and too Jewish, and so they rejected the name. Israel has been in that land for over 4,000 years. They have always had a presence. There was never a time that Israel was abandoned by the Jews. They always had people there. They were enslaved. In fact, Muhammad, one of the things that he did, he exterminated, now see, I'm asking you to do a lot. He exterminated all the teenage boys that had, had uh, reached puberty. They, they would have to drop their pants and they would check them and he would kill them. To my young boys, that's how much they hated the Jews. They tried to do what Pharaoh did, for instance, when Pharaoh decided that the Israelites were too great, uh, they put them in hard bondage. And when they were building the pyramids and cities, if they found a male child, the father had to take the child. And another, another thing was, if they did not meet their quota, they had to lay so many bricks a day. Then they would put the mortar down there, put the mortar, put the baby there, and, put the, uh, and the father had to put the mortar and help insist in, in lowering the stone. Didn't care how much he cried. If he didn't do it, they would kill him. Now, can you believe that your own child, instead of a brick, you put your child in there because you did not meet your quota? Hmm. Evilness. So what Muhammad, oh, wait a minute, you're missing me something. Uh, the, the same symbols that Islam have and the Catholic Church. Same symbols. Catholic Church unofficially was 325 A.D. And Islam did not come in existence until 6,000. Okay, here's the, on, on the which one is the Muslim? They both have beads. They both have these beads. What? What? Oh, what? Oh, the black and white one is the Catholic, and the other one. Now remember, the the Muslims didn't come into existence until after almost three hundred years after the Catholic Church was established. It's a pope. This is Mecca. The bottom is Mecca. Now look, look at the similarity in how they dress. Women, wait, see the white, the similarity. 
Okay, look down here, look at the nuns. Similarity. Why did the Muslims adopt that attire or that dress? Similarity. See, the similarity between Catholicism, Islam, pictures included, etc. Why? I mean, just look, what is the Pope doing kissing the Quran? The spiritual leader of the nation, I think, I think, I think this is Iran, Iran, I think it's Iran. I think it's Iran. He's not kissing the, he's not kissing the, all right, let, let's say scripture. This here, King James, is what you call Protestant. Catholics have their own personal Bible. How come this religious leader isn't kissing the Catholic Bible? Ask, oh, I'm asking you to think. 24th chapter of Matthew. So I'm deeply disturbed of my inability to get this. In. No, I know what to do, but I can't, I can't create the time. I, oh, well, there goes the Pope. Look, look at him. This is the birthplace. And wait a minute, Muhammad's wife was an ex Catholic nun. She financed Muhammad. You won't hear about it. It's, all, it's, it's in every nation, every state. They know about it, but no one is talking about it. But here, truth, 24th chapter of Matthew. So the Irish are fighting against each other. Oh, let me tell you about Italians. Sister Larry, I'm like, where's she at? Oh, I can't talk. Oh, she'll forgive me if I talk about the Italian. When I went to Rome, when Sister Mary said I went to Rome, we were happy. We're in Rome. And uh, uh, because where other church was, there were some Italians that live across the, uh, from the church. His name was Joe. He's an older man. And so I'm in Rome, and I'm going to pick up, uh, pick up a friendly conversation. I said, uh, I know Joe, and I made this word. I said, I have a friend back in the States. Uh, he's Sicilian. So just look. I said, but what? I said, he's Sicilian. Now these, now, these are all Italians. They almost had nothing to say. So I'm not going to tell you too much more about it. So when I got back to America, I said, Joe, I said, I was in Rome, and I was telling him about I knew you. He said, oh, no. He said, no. He said, Romans are high class. They look down on us as Sicilians. I think, I'm not sure, wasn't the mafia started by the Sicilians? Yeah, the crime, the, the mafia, the Italian mafia came to America and place, etc. Um, they were insulted. They didn't want to be compared with Sicilian. In fact, as my memory served me, they, 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 they discriminated, discriminated against, um, against the Sicilian. But didn't the Sicilians come from North, and North Africa or something like that, Sandy, remember? Right, right, right. Everybody should, everybody should know about Hannibal. He was the, probably the greatest outside of David and the kings of Israel, the greatest general that ever lived. Not Alexander the Great, uh, not Caesar, no, but Hannibal. And what happened, they were Israelites. And they mixed races with the Romans, and they were half-breeds, half red. They didn't think anything. They always thought of Sicilian as low class. Same people, discrimination. Russia, you had white Russians, oh, Sicilian, Italian, founded by Sicilian by elements of the Camorra, a crime organization established in Naples in the early 1800s. They won't have anything with the uh, Romans considered them low class. Well, uh, uh, getting back, 
to the Russians. Put in white Russians versus red Russians. Most people don't even know that. White Russian, it has nothing to do with color. It has to do with what they believe was right for the Russian country. The Red Army was a communist Bolshevik group, and the White Army was anti-communist and included many former terrorists as loyalists. So you have the same people, same people fighting against each other. They, they did not want company to be established. And guess what? America helped establish communism. Hmm. In fact, at one time, anybody know this name? Clark Gable. Who's heard of Clark Gable? Beanie, you, didn't have, you weren't born. I thought you were our age, Beanie. Ruby, Clark Gable. Ronald Reagan, all of the top movie stars in the world from Hollywood were communists. Put in Hollywood communists. They were communists here in America. I'm trying to think of uh, Susan Hayward, uh, Gene Autry, uh, all these famous movie stars were communists. And later, Reagan becomes governor of California, then becomes governor, uh, president of America, a former communist. They won't teach us in school. Red Army versus White Army. Russian, same people fighting against each other. In fact, if it wasn't for good old America, there, there would be no Germans supposedly exterminating six million Jews. It would not exist. Germany was annihilating. Germany and Russia attacked Poland in 1939, I think. Look, 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 look here. FBI reports names Hollywood figures as communists. Edward G. Robinson. I mean, the list of popular stars, radio personalities, they were all communists trying to destroy America. And Hollywood kept them first and foremost and would not reveal this. So deception is everywhere in the world, deception. It's hard to find the truth outside of what is here. 50 years, I can't find anything that's wrong. That's 50 years. And it's still right. Predicting everything that is happening today. Go with me again to verse 7. For nations shall rise against nation. Oh, oh, let me stop here. Can you punch in just YouTube a little bit? Tunnels, Gaza tunnels, Egyptian tunnel, Gaza tunnels dug by kids, children. So what, what has happened is a mosque is using 10, 11, 12, 13-year-old kids to dig these hundreds of tunnels to smuggle goods from Egypt into Gaza. Kids. Say this. There they go. I can't see them. My, my screen is real dark. They, they don't go to school. This is the only way they can make money is dig in these tunnels. The United Nations knows about it. Guess what the United Nations is doing about it? Nothing. So they can't go to school. That's a tunnel. They dig, dig them for miles. Sometimes the tunnels cave and the kids die. They can't even stand up. And then they taught them how to put lights, electricity there. Look how antiquated that is. Little kids. All day long. Put in, I think, I 
I'm trying to think, what do we get from Uganda? How they explore? Now, let, let, let's go to Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast and uh, children slaves for the chocolate. Yeah, chocolate plantations. So what they do is they raid the Christian communities to Mother Ivory Coast, children, children, and force them to work in these chocolate plantations. At one time, most of the chocolate from the world came from the Ivory Coast. Children labor and slavery in the what? How old is that little boy? They have to do it. Does the United Nations know about it? Yes, they know about it. Well, how come they won't do something about it? Show some more pictures. Look, they take and they will beat them to death if they do not cooperate. Children. You talking about us being blessed? Then when they when the Ivory they call themselves the world called Nestle, the number one uh, Nestle chocolate was where most of it was going. They know about it. And yet they do nothing about it. Then if you go to most of the computers have an element that comes out of Uganda in those mines. Ah, oh, I can't think of it. It's a chemical, uh, it's like a mineral that they need to make the computers. Nestle, Hers Hershey and PA, Cargill, Wynn, Dismissal, and U.S. of can't punish them. Listen, Hershey, Pennsylvania, Nestles, I think it's in Sweden or Switzerland, I don't know where it's at. Cargill, it was Canadian, American, I'm not. When they said what they're doing to these kids is not criminal. So we know, so you get your chocolate. Just know that it's slave labor. So then they shifted over to Taiwan. Huh? Cobalt. Listen. Look how those kids, kids slaving themselves. We're privileged, we're blessed. We're privileged, we're blessed. Yeah, there it goes. DR, it's DR Congo children. Yeah, lithium, lithium batteries of smartphones and electric cards are made by Apple, Samsung, SUNY, Amnesty International said Thursday. Say, say Apple knows about it. Uh, Samsung, they know about it. Sony, they know the kids are being exploited, but it's about scriptures that the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. It's about money. I told you when I was in Egypt, saw a bus. It was empty, was laying in a canal, and the windows were open because they don't have any air conditioning on most of the buses. We're in Cairo. And I asked the bishop, I said, why is that bus still in that water? He said, oh, some people died. And I thought... And he indicated there might be some dead bodies in that bus that was in this canal, like a little river, if you don't know what I'm talking about. I said, well, why don't the government or some?" Oh, he said, life is expendable. He said, life is worth one penny here. In other words, life is cheap. L listen, look, look. Exploitation. So all these minerals that are on the African continent don't even belong to the people. I mean, they belong to the people, but the Europeans still control them. Like, for instance, Somalian pirates were hijacking ships. I think they were Somalians. And, every, and they're kidnapping, uh, hijacking ships with cargo or passage on for a ransom. 
And oh, they were killing them now. I mean, they were being killed. The reason they did it is because they were being exploited, particularly by the Chinese, were coming in there, taking up their fishing land, depleting them of the fish that they need to live, and nobody was doing anything about it. So they decided, since the international community won't do anything, we'll start hijacking. Are they wrong? They're wrong. But they're desperate. They live by the fishing industry. And the Chinese women, not only Chinese, but mostly the Chinese and other Europeans were coming into their, uh, leaving the international waters and was violating their space. Nobody says anything about it. So now what is happening everywhere around the world, everywhere around the world, everywhere around the world, uh, falsehood. You have Costa Ricans, Venezuelans, Colombians, Haitians, I can't think of all the different countries, are going to Colombia because the Colombians are processing them to go to Panama and they get processed. Listen, families die trying to come to America for the benefits. They die. And they go through the most dangerous jungle, the Dorian, I think it's called Dorian, most dangerous uh, uh, for, no, jungle in the world. Not only do they have to worry about being robbed, but some of the deadliest snakes, scorpions, they even have plants and trees that are poisonous. And they walk for four days, pitiful conditions, trying to get to America. So they go from Colombia, they get to Colombia, go to Panama, Costa Rica, then Mexico, and then they get to the American border. They have been lied to. Tens of thousands have been lied to. All you do is get to America and they take care of you. They interview all these migrants uh, that want to get to America because it's an easy life. And what they do is to destabilize and get the American people. All right, over here in Rotterdam, you have people living in a hotel. Because New York City could not handle the immigration, buses came from Texas, from the border of Texas all the way to New York City to drop off migrants. Problem is, most of them can't speak English, have no money, and they put them in four and five star hotels. Our government did it, our government did it. So the people have been lied to, thinking all they have to do is just get to the American border, the Mexican border, and they will live a new life. When I say horrible, uh, one family, okay, here goes some of them, here, li listen, here. They walk for four days, it's treacherous. Oh, the, yeah, the Darien Gap, as may, oh, it's more than that. You see, pathetic, mud, rain, families, they're climbing, trying to avoid the snakes, trying to avoid the uh, scorpions, and then you have the Colombians that are in the cartel, cartel, you have to pay money, pay money. When they get to finally America, reality sets in. Well, why is that being permitted to happen? Who is lying to these people? But it's allowed to happen. You say, why? To destabilize the world. In Europe, uh, the, the, let me tell you what about the, uh, the Arabs, the Egyptians said they don't want the Palestinians setting up on, in the Egyptian land. Now, wait a minute, those are your brothers. Those are your sisters, and you don't want them over in Egypt. And guess where they're going to go? They're going to go to the desert. He said, well, that's not a good place. No, that's deception. Las Vegas is in a desert. Phoenix is in a desert. So it's about irrigation. Um, Adafi. Adafi was going to change the whole uh, economic climate of Africa, Adafi. 
We put him in office. I mean America. We put him in office. He had a sophisticated irrigation system that would pump fresh water all over the African continent. Well, can't let that happen. So he was killed. Who put him in office? America. Who killed him? America. Most people don't realize that America is being used to do all the dirty work internationally. America. Proud. People say, I'm proud to be American. I wouldn't want to be anything else but American. But I don't condone, condone what we do. So we're in a situation as truth holders and knowers, we have to do something with the truth. People are suffering all around the world because there's not enough of us. I'm hoping that this will convict our conscience and say, I, I can do more and I can do better. We are privileged. We are privileged to cause the... See, the key is when it's kingdom against kingdom and nation against nation, it's to get them to implode. Implode means to collapse within. So... Uh, See if you can find it. Obama, one million Muslims enter America under Obama administration. See if you can find it. Why? They won't let, uh, they won't let the Haitians come in. And they're right in our hemisphere. When the, what they call the boats, wait a minute, they let the... Uh, Venice, Venice uh, Vietnamese boat people, let them come in America. How many of you remember that, the Vietnamese in the boats? When they brought them to America, not the Haitians, no. And it's getting worse because more lies are out there in the world than ever before. More lies. Only thing you can trust it's six years, 6,000 years of history. Oh, let me tell you about Hamas. Torturing their own people. Doing what the Germans would do. The Germans during World War II, if they wanted to torture you, they would tie your hand down, they would take a nail and a hammer, and they would start nailing under you. That was one of the ways of torturing. The Koreans, North Koreans, they tortured too. Every way that you could possibly think of. Uh, I don't want to call any more names because some of you might recognize the names. No one here, but some of the kids from this country. So violence, atrocity, hatred, animosity is everywhere. And it's going to get worse. You're not going to stop it. I don't care who prays for it. They're not going to stop it. It's too late. The scripture already laid out what is going to happen. So the Jews, I'm going to tell you again, there are many that call themselves Jews that aren't really Jews. You can be a proselyte. A proselyte is, I'm a Gentile. See, in God's eyesight, in the religious eyesight, there are only two types of people. Jews and Gentiles. Everything else, if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile, but that's not even right because there are 11 other tribes. So what is going to happen? The Jews are going to, going to feel a need to migrate, to go back to Israel from around the world. They're, they're in Argentina. The Jews are everywhere. They're in Australia. They're all over the world. They're going to feel this inclination. I've got to go back home. What are they going to call them? I got to go back home. Now, when that happens, no, it's, in the, it's happening now. In fact, Sister Nancy told me that the college students now are dropping out of college, the Jewish ones, to go to Israel to fight. Can you show me a picture of Israel in relationship to the Arab countries that are around it? It is a miracle. It is a miracle 
that Israel exists, it is a miracle. If you ever get a chance, look at the Six Day War. Uh, I'm trying to think of his name. The Egyptian president was uh, was Egyptian president. I'm trying to think of his name. I can see him now. He miscalculated during the war, made a mental mistake. Now, you, you have to show where Israel is in the brown. My, my thing has a lot of fuzz in it. No, not Nasir. What is his name? Anwar, Anwar Sadat, is that his name? Is Sadat? What? Yeah, Sadat. He made one of the worst military mistakes in the world, but it was God. They should have annihilated Israel, but they kept making mental elementary mistakes. See, see, so you got Egypt, you, there it goes. See, that little, ta- that little piece of land right there is causing disturbance around the world. That little, 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 little place. Look how it's surrounded. And then they have Sudan, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Syria. I can't see the two in there. Jordan, Jordan, and that little nation. No, it's not that little one right there. It's right there. No, 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 no. It's the yellow. No, 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 no. Israel. It's the yellow. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. To the right. To the right. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> that's that's Syria. Israel. I want to show how tiny Israel. Now that's supposed to be somewhere to God strip. Above that, you see yellow or orange, and below that, that little tiny state. All these powers can't destroy it. They're trying, have not been able to do it since May 14, 1948. They have not been able to destroy them. Will they? Absolutely not. Impossible can't destroy them because Israel, we don't, I don't believe in this word, they say we have a divine presence. We're, we don't believe in the divine divinity. Miraculously, all those armies can't destroy that little thing, that little country there. Now they're going back to suicide bombers. They got that from the Japanese called World War II, they were called Japanese kamikaze. See, I can speak a little foreign language, kamikaze. That's not American. That's where you take an airplane and you dive or crash it into particularly the aircraft carriers. And they thought they were honoring the emperor, the emperor of Japan. Uh, He was supreme. He was God. They were dying for him. Well, the Palestinians that are suicide bombers, they put explosives on them. They get in the crowd and they blow themselves up. They will have 20 wives over in paradise. I think it's 20. Special gift that they have. My thinking, if I was them, well, if it's so good, I would tell the leaders, why don't you show me what to do? I'm going to have 20 wives when I die. Well, show me. In fact, they should be eager. Let, let's just die. I'll show you how to do it. But people are forced into believing the lies that are out there today. We must help others some way, somehow, and I don't know how. So now the conflicts are going to be so scary around the world. World War, they still talk. World War Three. No, it's not gonna be no world. Christians, world, everybody, Muslims, Hindu, uh, everybody's talking about World War Three. No, emphatically, no, it can't happen. 
What is happening now is famines and it's going to get worse. Pestilence, diseases, and it's going to get worse. Earthquakes, they're going to increase. Verse 8, all these are the beginning of something getting worse. Say the world is getting worse. There's no signs. There's no economic uh, indicators. There's no proof anywhere in the world that the world's getting better. Take America, the best medical facilities in the world. People from all over the world come to America for medical assistance. And yet we have hospital diseases, pneumonia, flu shot. You would think those that get the flu shots every year, they wouldn't catch the flu. You know why you have to get a flu shot every year? Because every year begins with the M. It, it what, Donna? Mutates. So the virus shot that you get now is based on last year's virus. And so the virus you have now, they have to make a vaccine. vaccine. It'll be for next year. So the flu season is already over with. And yet people getting shots. Ooh, I'm going to be in trouble. Shots and shots. And, and if you go, and go to the pharmacist, go to the Walmarts, flu medicine, flu medicine, flu medicine. By now, they shouldn't have to sell any flu medicine. If oh, it's too late, the shots work. So let me get, wrap this up here. Verse 9, then shall they deliver you up to be a say, persecution. Per, after all this, what's going to be worse? Persecution, 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 persecution. Afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated. I told you the power, of, uh, what you call them, Pakistanians. I was in France. I left Pakistan and went to Paris, France. And I'm hungry, and I want some good food because I couldn't eat too much food over in uh, Pakistan. And I want to eat. We're sitting outside about 12 o'clock in the morning. I got to get up at 7 o'clock and get a flight to come back to America. And these two Palestinian Christians wanted, wanted to drill me. Will you tell us why? Do America support the Arabs and give them money and they're killing us? I said, oh... I'm trying to eat. I'm hungry. Um, I said, it's not the American people, it's the government. But why do they do that? You're supposed to be a Christian nation. They're fussing at me like I did something to them. I said, well, I tried to explain to them. I'm trying to eat, too. I'm, I'm hungry. I don't know what. So finally, I realized I'm not going to get anywhere with them. I don't know if I even finished the food. I didn't want them to take me to the hotel. So I can get a couple hours sleep and get up four hours ahead of time, make sure I did not miss that flight out of Paris coming to America. America's a Christian nation. There are Christians in America that actually believe and still are preaching. America's a Christian nation. It is not. In fact, Christians are under attack. If there was an American nation, you would see statues of Moses and and, and David and, and Isaiah and the 12 apostles. You don't see statues like that. You see all these pagan statues. Idolatry everywhere in America. In fact, Thomas Jefferson, it was it Thomas Jefferson that wrote, began the Declaration of Independence? Some of the founding fathers said, no. So you say, uh, you got to include uh, God in this thing. Then he reluctantly put in, endowed by their creator. Well, who's your creator? That could be anybody. It depends on what you believe. Thomas Jefferson. So the world is deceived. Oh, I'm going to get it for sure. Christians are deceived. 
And a lot of us have seen. So, worsening, worsening, worsening. Peace process between Hamas, Hezbollah, Iranians, and Israel, impossible. There's too much hatred and animosity. It's impossible. It, 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 it cannot happen under any circumstance. If it does, it's temporary. Something will happen. And in my personal opinion, I doubt very seriously if, if all the hostages are alive. That's just me. Based on nothing God told me, based on a sound mind, based on what is actually, actually happening. So having said that, truth, knowing the truth, should be a high priority. We've got to know how to tell people, let's substantiate the Bible. It's impossible to talk about the the, the accuracy or the credibility of the Bible, you have the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. How many of you heard of Dead Sea Scrolls? For 2,000 years, they were in a cave, and they found these old writings where it substantiated word for word verbatim most of the scriptures in the Bible. 2,000 years old. Science did not believe that Sodom and Gomorrah, Gomorrah existed. They didn't believe it. They said it was south of the Red Dead Sea, the Salt Sea. Then one doctor, a Christian doctor, said something's wrong. He says, Sodom and Gomorrah, that God, does everybody know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? God destroyed. He said, according to the scriptures, say it's got to be uh, the top, north of the Dead Sea. They thought he was a fool. He dug with his expedition, I think, 12 years, and they discovered and found out that Solomon, what the Bible says, Solomon and Gomorrah was the exact location where Lot and Abraham were. This is irrefutable. We should know this. Now, it gets tougher. Listen to me. Nothing is getting easier. Listen to me. I don't care what aspect or initiative that you involve. Nothing is getting easier. To transcend or overcome this, you've got to have wisdom. The severity of the trial, of the test... The temptation, it requires wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask. Of who? Wisdom is, the, wisdom is the best use of knowledge, experience, and understanding to obtain the best results at the best time using the best what? Method. They told us we're living under the new what? Said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I, no, no, I, no, no, I, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I, what the Lord.
body, but I information, historical, current facts built on biblical history. Worse. What does it mean it's going to get worse? Exactly. Only way we can prepare for worse is to be spiritual. I'm saved today. name of Jesus Christ. We pray that we are able to assimilate the word of God. May we get closer unto thee. Draw us closer. Whatever you have to do, Lord, we're saying do it. Because above all else, we must be saved. We don't want to pray redundant prayers, but everything we ask you for is based on faith. We don't know how you're going to do it. 
when you're going to do it, but don't let us become faint-hearted. Don't let us give up hope. We're so thankful that you spared us again from the hour of bereavement. No mothers or fathers or brothers or sisters or sons or daughters died. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for a saved mind. We know we're not what we ought to be. But help. We're looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. And thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, we just don't want to make decisions. Not just good decisions. Not just better decisions. But help us in this time of deception to make the very best decisions that from this day forth we'll be able to look back with no regret say, Lord, from henceforth I'm going to make the best decision. Search us, O oh God, to know our hearts. Try us to know our thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in us and lead us in the way everlasting. Lord, create us a clean heart, a clean heart, a clean heart, and renew a right spirit. Appetite. Lord, we need you to cultivate us that we might have a deeper spiritual appetite. For your words that blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Set us aflame that we will be one of your faithful few on fire. Now, Lord, continue to keep us under the blood. Thank you for keeping us from the wiles of the adversary. Thank you. You brought us through the day by giving us the benefit of the doubt. We pray that tomorrow will be even better if you grant it. Use us and consecrate us unto thy service. Now, Lord, have thy own way in our lives. Save sinners and reclaim backsliders everywhere. We pray for the exploited and persecuted around the world, particularly the children, for you said, for such as is the kingdom of heaven. We're praying for dying grace for those of this very hour. Now, Lord, heal our souls, our minds, and our bodies. Give you all in your name, all the honor and the praise and all the glory. And remember those that are still struggling physically and medically, perform a miracle. But most importantly, keep them in the blood. Keep your name all the honor, praise, and the glory in Jesus' name. Let us say amen. You can't make me down.